We're in section 3.8, that's Hopital's rule, and we're going to work on problem 37, which says, the limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of cosecant x times the natural log of quantity 1 minus sine x. Find it. Evaluate the limit using Hopital's rule, if appropriate. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to jot that problem down. The limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of cosecant x times the natural log of 1 minus sine x. Now that's not in the classic indeterminate form because it's not a fraction. But let's see what happens. As x goes to 0, cosecant, that's 1 over sine. Uh, let's see, so sine goes to 0. So this would go to infinity. So this goes to infinity. What does natural log of 1 minus sine x do? Well, sine x goes to 0, so 1 minus sine x goes to 1. Natural log of 1 is 0. So this is the indeterminate form, zero, infinity times 0. So that's an indeterminate form that we can convert if we divide by one of those pieces. Well, what's convenient to divide by? I suppose if I divided by, uh, if I put cosecant in the denominator, so I left this in the numerator, having something in the numerator would be the same as having 1 over cosecant in the denominator. But why write 1 over cosecant when cosecant itself is just sine? 1 over cosecant is really just sine x. Now notice what I've done is I've gone from indeterminate form infinity times 0. We, we agreed that this had limit as x goes to 0 from the positive side of 0. This has limit 0. So now I have indeterminate form 0 over 0. The numerator is defined, the denominator is defined, and differentiable and the denominator is not equal to 0, so Hopital's rule applies. Very convenient. I'll write a little LH to indicate I'm using Hopital's rule. And I'll leave my limit. I'm going to have to use the chain rule in the numerator. That's 1 over 1 minus sine x times the derivative of that. Let's see, the derivative of that is negative cosine x. Then, in the denominator, the derivative of sine is cosine. Before I mess with it too much, let's get rid of my fraction within a fraction. Let's see. Okay, if I multiply by 1 over this, so I want to get rid of it, so let's multiply by 1 over cosine x, 1 over cosine x, those will cancel, those will cancel, and I get negative 1 over 1 minus sine x. That's rather convenient because as x goes to 0 from the positive side, sine x goes to 0, I get negative 1 over 1 minus 0 using substitution, that's just negative 1.